All right, all right. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All right, hey, we the brothers here from uh, Great Millstone, Atlanta Kemp. I'm Atazawam. I have here with me tonight. Gamal Yala. All right, coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai with another lesson. And of course, Lord willing, we hope and pray that it's edifying. Before we get started, we want to give all praises, all glory and honor to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai by Shem Dash. All right. Also, we want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do rule and teach well. And as always, peace, love, many blessings unto the elect. All right. Uh, tonight's lesson is simply going to be entitled, Remember Why You Started. Okay. And of course, this is going to be an exhortation to the flock and um, mainly pinpointed towards the brethren that are actively laboring, laboring uh, in this truth. All right. If you're a part of a camp, um, if you've given diligence to go out to these highways and byways and you're continuing to, uh, to do this, uh, remember why you started. Okay. What prompted you, you know, to, to, to pick yourself up, dust yourself off and go out and get into these, uh, into these camps. Okay. Now, of course, we know it was Yahweh Bashim I was shy because man's goings are, 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 are of the Lord. Okay, but what spirit did the Lord provoke within you to make you feel compelled to go out there and do what you're doing? And um, sometimes we have to retrace those spiritual roots and tap back into those things, because in Babylon, the great, there are so many different tentacles that can lead you astray. You know, you can be led through a woman, you can be led through a career, you can be led through a lust. You could be led through um, excessive occupations, okay? But what was that foundational piece that really compelled you to do what you're doing now, okay? And whatever that foundational piece is, remember what made you start, okay? When you started to work out, okay? What was it that when you took a look in the mirror, what was that one thing that told you that you needed to work out? I need to do better with this. What was that one thing in your spirit that you saw that you needed improvement in and that prompted you to go create a membership and go and, and do strenuous work? What was that? What, what, what made you start it? And always remember to keep yourself hooked to that foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start this lesson, and Lord willing, I hope and pray um, that it's edifying, all right? And I have the brother Gamali Ali here with me, too, and he'll be, um, you know, coming in through the Spirit. So this is um, this is the book of Revelations, chapter 2, and uh, you know what? I'm going to start at 2. It says, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which are Salakia, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, Salakia. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Okay? Remember, the first love. Is this truth. Okay. That was the process of being reborn. Into the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Okay. When you fell in love with the truth. And then you became a babe. You, you started to get into the milky. Things of the scriptures. You started to read. You started to study. You started to explore. Okay. That's what you fell in love with. And through that love. It compelled you to act. Usually that's what love does. Mm -hmm. You act upon that love. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, you know, you have the saying, love at first sight. You know? And, um, you know, remembering that first love. You know, when we when we first heard this this truth, it was love at first sight. Because we it was something that struck us. It, it was something that struck a nerve, so to speak. And, and you know, it, it resonated. Like we read uh, Romans 8 and 16. Yep. The spirit beareth witness. That means that your spirit was compelled to hear this truth, man. Mm-hmm. 
You got it. Yeah, that's right. So it's a first love. Okay? Verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. So the Lord is like, mm -hmm. hey, you fell in love with this. Mm -hmm. So you need to remember where you fell from. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that happens in certain relationships. Okay? The, the initial bond that was created in relationships, usually one one uh, gender or the other falls from that initial uh, bond. And the reason, the reason why relationships go into shambles is because somebody flipped the script. Familiarity. Yeah, familiarity. And, and also because somebody just fell, fell out of the initial love. Mm -hmm. They're not in love with that, with that initial thing that compelled you. And this truth is not up, is not up for bargain. Mm -hmm. Okay? You have to keep the same foundational love for the truth. Which is why this lesson is entitled, Remember Why You Started. What was it that really drew you? And that's that's a personal question, brothers. Okay? That's a very personal question that only you can answer. What really compelled you to come into the truth? Was you was you bought out and you became an agent? Well, your foundation is corrupt. You're gonna fall, you're gonna, you're gonna fall. Mm -hmm. Okay? Did you truly love Yahweh Shai? Did you truly love what the word was saying? Did you truly love, you know, to have love for the elect? Okay. Was it the fear? What really compelled you? Okay. Going back. Verse five. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Okay, now when you go into the book of um, Proverbs, it's around about in the 20th chapters, all right, it says that the spirit of man is a candlestick. So the Lord will put your spirit out. He will take the, 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 the light. He will take the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding away from you. Mm -hmm. Hence, you see what's happening to the Sakari, to the IUIC, to the IHUPK, you know, to the GOC. They don't even go to camp anymore. Okay, you know why? Because they're not compelled. Their spirit is not compelled. You got to, hey, I'm going to say this in the spirit, and then we'll jump to the next scripture. You got to catch yourself if you get easily distracted when the spirit is speaking. Mm. If you're not fully compelled when you can tell that the spirit is in rotation, and you're not being fully pulled in, and you, you easily get on your phone, or you can easily just lose that uh, that tenacity or that uh, that that passion. You got to check yourself because mm -hmm. you're dwindling. Okay. Yeah, your attention should be there. You know the, the scriptures say, uh, "Buy the truth and sell it not," which basically means, uh, what, what what are you buying? You're 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 paying your attention. You know, yes. you should give your full attention to this ministry, you know, and that's that's not a, a option. That's a requirement. Mm -hmm. You have to. You got to keep your house shy first. We were just saying that in the spirit. Okay. Your house shy comes first. So if you really love your house shy, you know, hey, that's that. Your house shy is the first love. That's right. You know, and we got to We got to keep that. You know, you got to keep that, you know, just like how you said relationships, how they'll, uh, you know, one party will, will, uh, falter. Well, your house shy's love ain't, ain't, ain't dwindling. Come. So most times when, when somebody fall, uh, fall out of love with the truth, so to speak, or di get disconnected, they, the, it's on their end. That's right. You know, you guys. That's to. right. You know, and that's why it says, except thou repent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there has to be a level of self-examination that comes a part of this labor. And when you examine yourself and you can pinpoint where you've fallen from, you should repent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't be ashamed to repent, brothers. Uh -huh. Okay. Because remember, knowledge puffeth up. Don't ever act like you're on a level to where 
it's a shame to repent, man. Okay. It shouldn't be a shame to repent. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so like this is the book of Philippians chapter three and verse 12. Well, I'm starting 11. It says, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained either were already perfect. This is Paul speaking. And Paul had had not attained the glory and the majesty of Yahweh Bashim al at this particular moment. Neither did Paul see himself as being perfect. It says, but I follow after, and which is what we do. We in these corruptible bodies, this flesh is sin. We have all kinds of thoughts. We have all kinds of things that's pulling us in different directions on a daily basis. And uh, but we still follow. Mm -hmm. We still go, we still push in that direction, we still go and pray. We still ask the Lord not to take his Holy Spirit away from us. These are the things that you as an individual servant must be dedicated in. Mm -hmm. A brother can't pray. A brother can't always be the one praying for you. You got to pray for yourself. Okay. It says, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Hamashiach Yehawashat. So Paul is saying, I'm trying to apprehend the kingdom of heaven, okay, which is the goal, because I'm already apprehended of the Lord. The Lord came to me and apprehended me, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to apprehend what the Lord apprehended me for. Right. Okay? Which is the kingdom. Okay? Salvation. Verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Meaning he hasn't attained the level that he's that that, that he's looking to attain. He, he hasn't apprehended that yet. It says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Yeah, our past sins, past relationships, past um, hindrances, mm -hmm. Satan, the, the things that Satan did to us in our past. Some You got to let certain shit go. Okay, I was just talking to uh, Elder Gad upstairs, and um, I said one thing that I'm learning in this truth is you got to get over stuff quick. You got to get over it quick. Mm -hmm. All right, it says here, it says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Yeah, because what happens, you know, when you um, when you don't get over things. You'll overthink and it'll cloud your judgment, and uh, you know you'll you'll um, you'll start to to you'll start to make unwise decisions because you're extra emotional. Yep. You know when when we deal with we first of all we already know what we signed up for. We know that hey Yahweh Shai said bear your own cross, so we know that we're bearing a cross in this truth. So with that. With knowing what we signed up for, we gotta know like, get up. You know, you got it's a it's a quick. Yeah. And Yahweh Shai knows Yahweh Shai knows what's gonna hurt us, but guess what? He's not gonna um, he's not gonna empathize. With, he's not gonna sympathize with us. Yeah. You know, and and just you know just let us let us just keep keep. Dwell, you're dwelling on it, you know. Yeah, that's right, brother. Get over it. That's right. Get over it. Mm -hmm. Push towards the mark. Let's say if you racing and you doing track, and you start out and you you uh you trip over your ankle and you you kind of twist your ankle a little bit. You gotta get over that shit fast. Keep running. You gotta keep running. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't just hobble off and be like yeah you know what I'm saying. Rip. You know, if this is a hang, a sprained ankle, you gotta go. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse uh, 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, the Most High shall reveal even this unto you. If I could say, it said press toward the mark now. That's one reason why a lot of us uh, 
you know, uh, uh, that's one reason why a lot of us got involved with the truth or, you know, that's one thing that attracted us to the truth was the mark. Yeah. What is the mark? The kingdom. kingdom. You know, getting in, you know, re uh, receiving the prize. It says, for the price of the high calling of the most high in Hamashiach. You know? Yeah, because that price is that what? That penny. Mm -hmm. That penny is, is, is the equation of salvation. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what we're pressing towards. And we, we sometimes have to remember, like, what, what made us start to even race? What was it that compelled us to even get ready, set, and go? Yeah. What was that, man? And only you can answer that, brother. Yeah. Only you can answer that. Because if you allow these other different distractions to come in and prohibit you from running the best race you can run, that's because you didn't realize what made you start the race. You let other things pull you away from your foundation and that's why we got to remember why we started yeah okay and you look at that movie um or that show good example is that show squid game mm. what yeah. was their motivation to to keep playing although it was a they knew that that the the odds were against them they knew that the the price was death yeah ultimately yeah but guess what? They kept playing because they wanted that prize. That's right. They wanted that. They they kept looking at that uh, that money, you know, at, at the top. They kept looking at that. They kept thinking about their current situation. Oh, and that's another thing. That's another reason is is you gotta look at your current. What about your current situation? What do you have to go back to mm. before the truth? Mm. You know, what do you have to go back to? That's another reason to keep going, or that's another reason to, to you know what I'm saying, to push. And it's true. Yeah. What, is, what is in the world to, to, to you know, uh, if, if you don't, if you leave, if you were to, you know, leave the camp or, you know, go back into the world, what are you going back to? Right. You ain't going to do nothing but rekindle the things that always vexed you. Mm -hmm. So you just got to remember, man, hunker down, Okay. Hunker down and just remember, go back to the go back to the beginning foundational things that really compelled you, man. God. It ain't always about being deep. It ain't always about stroking your ego and stroking your, you know, your rank and like no. Sometimes just go go back to the baby stages and just get get some good old fashioned milk. Mm -hmm. And remember, okay, I'm gonna read this for the. Uh, for the Captain Gamal, this is a uh, Proverbs chapter one and verse seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, and that's one reason. Going back to remembering why you got, why you, um, you know, got involved with the truth is fear. You know, scriptures say through the fear of the Lord we persuade many. So. You were persuaded. A lot of us were persuaded off of just fear. Yeah, we got scared of them Illuminati and martial law videos mm -hmm. back in 2009, 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. Them videos were spooky as hell. Yeah. And you'll watch what happens. You know, what, what would happen is you'll watch so many. You'll watch so many of those. And you're like, damn, okay. The, well, this is this is the evil side. Mm -hmm. But where's the good? Where Where... Where is the the righteousness? This is the wickedness. Okay, you go. You went into the depths of the wickedness, but where is the silver lining? Where right. you know, what about the salvation? What about you know, the Lord and how is He gonna escape us from from this wickedness that that we've researched into? But it says the fear of the Lord. Oh, and then you know, you think about the the missiles. Mm. Think about you know the World War Three. World War Three microchip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So that's how you start to you you get shook up. Yeah. So are you still? Do you still have that same level of fear? Mm. You know. That's right, brother. Yeah, because when you begin to get into this knowledge, you're getting into things that you've never heard ever before in your life.
And it scares you. Because you've always, in our mind, we've always thought as the Lord to be lovey-dovey, you know, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you know, rubbing the back of your head, consoling you. But then we start to see the things that's written of in the scriptures, mm -hmm. and we start to hear the plans of Esau. That shit started making you scared of the Lord. Right. Because that's the beginning of knowledge. When you start to understand the knowledge of Yahweh by Shina Shai, you get, you get shook up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Next precept. All right, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 51 and verse 30. Work your work be times, and in his time he will give you your reward. Yeah, so, hey, that's that's the main goal. I mean, you know, that's the main thing that we ought to do is just work your work, which be times means early. Mm -hmm. So work your work early. And this is a work, man. This it, Like we went into, this is a labor of love, you know? So... Work your work, time, work your work, beat times, and he will give you your reward. And like we went into that reward, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us did it to receive that reward. That's right, bro. Whatever your reason is, you know, you gotta work. You gotta work. That's how. That's the only way that that we will, like, like when you when you think about um motivation, you know. Like you said, what what motivated you to to sign up for a gym membership? What motivated you to do this? What made what motivated you to do to do that? Right. You know, obviously it was for reward. Right. Oh, it, you have a what's called risk and reward. Yeah. So the risk. Uh, uh well, well, you know, you have you have work, and then you get a reward. So basically, through that work, whatever whatever you do, you gotta put in work to get a reward. Yeah. When you go to when you get a gym membership, what do you want? You want the muscles. You want, you know, what I'm saying the the nice physique. Everything that you get involved in, there's a there's a reward behind that. Yeah. When you get into a, a financial program, what are the rewards? Mm -hmm. You get uh, uh, money. Yeah. You know, but it requires work. Yes, and the work is what comes with the risks, you know, mm -hmm. but hey, no risk, no reward, like what the brother's saying. So we have to remember our first works, our first works and work those works be times. And that's what we're doing. OK, what it says be times is not necessarily talking about at eight, nine in the morning. It's talking about doing it early before all hell break loose. Mm -hmm. That's why the scriptures say, um, Seek ye the Lord before the evil days draw nigh. Mm -hmm. Okay, seek thou the Creator. Ecclesiastes twelve. Yep, Ecclesiastes twelve. The brothers on point. Okay, you see that. So when it says work your work, be times, and we want to correlate it to the times now. It's talking about remember getting it in now. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't postpone, man. Hey, get it done. Do what you need to do. Rearrange your habits, rearrange your perspective, mm -hmm. rearrange your words, rearrange your company, your diet, your diet, your regimen, you know, re rearrange your schedule if you have to rearrange, you know, the certain things that's a hindrance unto you, rearrange those things, man, mm -hmm. and get to work so that you could grow. Mm -hmm. You got to remember all this shit out here, man. It, 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 it don't mean nothing, man. Mm -hmm. Remember what made you what, what, what remember why you started. <clears throat> okay? That's right. We got a couple more precepts and we're gonna close it out. We'll make it quick. Uh -huh. This is um the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 4. It says, Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of the Father. Um no, that's not what I wanted. What is it like? Ezekiel 20 and 13 or something? Mm -mm. That's not what I wanted. So lock here. It might be 12. Give me one second. I'm going to get it. Okay. That's not what I wanted. Ezekiel 20 and 43. All right. I'm going to start at 42. It says, And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel. That's what we want the Lord to do. Deliver us from this corruptible flesh Destroy our enemies. Receive us, you know, as your sons, as your obedient servants. Give us new bodies and put us back in the land of Israel. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. 
That's why we fighting. Ain't nobody over here trying to be going through, you know, uh, uh, fucking issues with the woman, issues with the uh, the kids, financial issues, f- fleshly issues, brotherly arts. Okay? It's a rite of passage, but, man, we just want to be in the kingdom of heaven and righteousness. Mm-hmm. Okay? Continuing on, it says... <clears throat> What, what was I reading? 42. It says, uh, Into the country for which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye be, and there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings. So it's about remembrance. Remember the scriptures say that I will stir up your pure, pure minds by way of remembrance. And that remembrance that's being stirred up is the remembrance of this truth, mm-hmm. which is our first love. Right. Because before we even took, Lord willing, if we of the elect, should I say, but before, if before we even took the physical form in the flesh, we had already knew the truth. We were in the heavens with Yahweh Shai. And that's what, what, that was our first beginning. Not a bitch. Not a car. Not a career. Not a, you know, a, a flawless body. And no. The remembrance mm-hmm. is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's that's who we were before we even took the form in, in the flesh. That's why we can't let the flesh override how we truly feel in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay? Let's keep this thing going here. It says, <clears throat> And there shall you remember your ways and all your doings, wherein ye have been defiled, and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And that's how we feel. The word loathe means to hate or disdain. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, man, you get to thinking about yourself and your ways and your habits and your thought process and, you you know, the things that you do on a daily basis. And you be like, man, what the fuck is wrong with me, man? Damn, I need to be better, man. I know I need to know these scriptures better, man. I know I need to be more on point. But guess what? You're going to loathe your own self for all of your evils that ye have committed. Because you're going to remember how you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And it's going to frustrate you and aggravate you because you're going to feel like you're not at where you need to be. And that is a good place to be. Trust me. Remember the prayer of the publican and the prayer of uh, of the Pharisee. When the Pharisee prayed, he said, Lord, I just want to say, I want to thank you for not making me as the sinners and as the other people and making me as this righteous individual. But then the publican said, Lord, please forgive me. And he asked for mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. So when you truly dig into your own spirit, you're going to start to loathe yourself because you're going to remember your ways. Okay. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Or Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. And you know, Captain Gamal, you can break it down. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Yeah, and that's, you know, simply put, you know, that's one of those scriptures that's uh, fundamental. You know, fear the Most High and keep his commandments. That's that's a rudiment, you know. Yeah. That's all we really got to do. And going into that fear. You know, going back to what we were saying about uh, fear is the beginning of knowledge. You know, fear is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. You know, keep his commandments. You know, that's our whole duty. And we yeah. got to stick We gotta stick to our duties. We got to stick. And that's the conclusion. The conclusion meaning, you know, that's basically the end. The end. You know, that's, that's what it is. That's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? This is what it's about, you know. You that's know, right. simply put. Mm-hmm. That's right. Final precept, Matthew uh-huh. chapter four. You know what? I'm gonna start at verse 18. Honestly, mm-hmm. this is um. It says, "And Yahweh shot walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Now, when you look at Peter and Andrew, well, I'm sorry, um. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah, uh, yeah. When you look at when you look at these two, 
they immediately followed Yahweh Shai. It was at a split. It was it was at uh, it said straightway, which means basically it was a quick decision. It was a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Now they wanted to follow Yahweh Shai. They said they wanted to be fishers of men. That was their reason. That was what Yahweh Shai presented to them. They didn't know anything else. They didn't know fear. Yahweh Shai didn't say. He didn't come to them, you know, putting fear on them. He didn't come to them putting, you know, uh, he didn't tell them about the kingdom. I mean, you know, just, you know, but he said, I will make you fishers of men. So whatever that was, something struck in their spirit where they said, hmm, yeah, fishers of men. Okay. Well, let me, let me, let's follow him. This is, this, this is different. I've never heard this, you know? And they followed him. They straight. They made that decision, and they followed him. And that's that's their initial, that's their initial reasoning why they started. Mm -hmm. Remember why you started. Okay. That's it. Remember. Don't fall from that. Don't slip from that. Don't let nothing get in the way of your salvation, because you have to protect your salvation with your life, just mm -hmm. as much as the next man. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is your livelihood, man. This is your longevity. This is your protection. You need to be you need to be protecting your salvation like you protect your bank account, man. Uh, that's right. You know, and that's real. So, Lord willing, that was an edifying lesson. We're gonna give all praises, all glory, and honor once more to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Akakudash. All right, double honors once again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, many blessings unto the elect. Shalom. Shalom.